Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so we are live for our next edition of Make, Do, and Mend, which is our series that's covering upcycling, repair, and DIY projects. And today's project is ice dyeing. So I have some samples of some fabric that I ice dyed a couple of weeks ago. And then I'll do a live demo of sort of how we got to that step. And I'll also rinse out and show you what the finished product will look like um, from some that I dyed this morning that's just about ready to be rinsed because um, it's been sitting for about four, four and a half hours now. So this is some fabric. The two colors that I used on this were um, a uh, Windsor purple, I think was the one, and the other was turquoise. Um, so this being my first attempt, I actually made a couple of errors with this one where I was letting it sit in the runoff, which you're not supposed to do. So I'll go over what the sort of stack of everything looks like. Um, but it ended up kind of causing like a bit of an all over wash with the color, which I don't think normally happens with ice dye. This is a piece of linen fabric that was actually an off white before I started dyeing it. Um, and then I'll show you what it looks like on some yarn that I dyed. And I've been using this for lots of mending projects um, and it's super variegated and it's got lots of different sort of tones. And then two weeks ago, I also turned one of our misprint t-shirts into a tank top. And again, I got lots of cool like color variations. And the unique thing with ice dyeing is instead of submerging your fabric into a vat of dye or squeezing it on with like a squeeze bottle or a spray bottle, you're actually crumpling up or folding up your fabrics, putting them on top of one of these just like plastic wash basins with a grate on top. I'm using some of those like click together shelving things, but you could use like a cookie rack or a dish rack or anything that's got something for the water to pass through as it melts. Um, so, um, sorry, it goes plastic pan or your sink if you have a laundry sink that you can leave them in, um, metal rack, then your clothing, then the ice, and then the dye. So it's super easy um, and it's relatively un predictable because you never know quite how the colors are going to sort of blend or extract. So you get a lot of uh, interesting sort of inconsistencies in the process. So the first thing that you need to do, depending on the type of dye that you're using, um, I'm using Dylon Cold. So Dylon Cold doesn't require any kind of pre-wash. But if you're using other brands of dye, you might need to do a little wash with some soda ash first. Dylon Cold already has soda ash in it that's going to act as something that allows the dye to adhere to the fibers more permanently. Um, but I don't need to actually use this. I just need to give all of my fabric a good soak and then wring it out. So bring you over to the sink here. And these are the fabrics that I'm going to be using on um, this particular project. So I've got some more white cotton yarn and just with some lukewarm water, give it a good soak. And then wring out the excess water. And then I just have a towel to put it on until we're ready to go over to where we're gonna do the dye. And I've got a couple of squares just of plain 100% cotton woven fabric. It's already been pre-washed and dried. I really hope you can hear me over the tap running. Just gonna put a little bit of the 
speaking for the last minutes. And I'll show you a couple of folding techniques once I've got everything soaked. Don't pre-wet your fabric. The dye just doesn't stick to it. It just kind of runs right off. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried tie dyeing before, but if you don't um, have everything wet, you'll only get dye in the spots where the fabric's like super concentrated. So this is just a way of sort of getting the fabric ready for the dye. And if I were needing it, this is when I would also put the soda ash in and it would go in as part of the soak. And when you're working with soda ash, you do want to wear a mask and gloves. T-shirt, bring that out. And show you couple of different ways to fold up the fabrics as well. So for this one, I've already got it um, kind of accordion folded. And then I'm going to accordion fold it again. And I'm going to tie up this stack with a little piece of twill tape. You could use um, like string or an elastic or anything just to sort of keep the layers stacked together. But I'll just do a little, little stack like that. This one, I think I'm gonna roll it kind of, or like, like do more like this. And then I'm gonna tie it in the middle. When um, we rinse out the other stack, you'll get to see sort of some different techniques. And then because my yarn bundle is already tied, I'm not gonna do anything with that. And the t-shirt, I think I'm just gonna scrunch and just let it kinda, kinda go, go a little bit wild. So I will take you over to where we're gonna be doing the dyeing. Grab my stack. I'll have to come back and get my gloves. Now this might take a little finagling to give you the best view. That's a pretty good view. Okay. So this is where we'll do the dyeing and you just kind of need to fit everything in sort of towards the center of um, of this pan because the ice is going to melt and it's going to start sort of running off the sides. Um, I've got a towel down on my floor and I've got a garbage bag down on my work surface but just to sort of protect that I don't want um, I don't want too much runoff escaping out the sides. So I'm just sort of arranging everything to fit the best into the center. And then I'm gonna grab my ice, which is chilling outside. I'm gonna put my gloves on now because ice is really cold. <laughs> I'm 
So what I realized when I was doing some this morning was it's nice to have a mix of sort of different types of ice and snow. So I have just like regular, it's not even really packing snow, it's like it's pretty loose. So I'm kind of like squeezing it together so that the ice crystallizes like a little bit tighter. You're gonna need a lot. Um, I have like another one of these pans just full of ice basically. And then I've got some regular, I keep calling this ice, this is snow. I was, you know, I was raised in a country full of snow. I should know what it's called. Uh, but I do have ice cubes as well. So I'm just gonna get this completely covered with like a pretty thick layer of ice and snow. And you want to use clean snow too. You don't want to use anything that's got um, like salt or um, sand or dirt or anything in it. Because um, you don't want it impacting how the clothing picks up the dye as well. So just like kind of smushing it all around. And then I've also already punctured my dye packets. Um, now Dial on Cold is sold in like these little packets where you just need to trim off the corner. Um, but I have some of the older, they're kind of like a little puck, like a little hockey puck of dye. Um, so you have to pierce, uh, pierce a little hole in them with a knife so that you can shake the dye out basically. This is like reminding me of being in a snowball fight, which it's been a long time since I've been in. <laughs> I'll show you the packets of dye that I'm using. I have this bright red and around this way. This sort of lighter, it's called purple vine. And then I've got this Mr. Shum orange. And I don't really have necessarily like a game plan or a look that I want to achieve with these colors. Um, so I'm going to start with my red first and I'm just sprinkling it on to the ice. And you always want to sort of start with a little bit less, I just stepped in some snow, <laughs> a little bit less dye because um, you can't really take it away, but you can always add more as you're layering and then I'm putting the orange next to the red because they'll blend into each other really nicely and then I'm going to put the purple on the other side of the red and just really really sprinkle it on there 
And then I'm going to go around to this corner, put some of the purple in the corner. And it's going to look really, really intense, but you'll see when we do the rinsing on the other pieces, just how much color it loses pretty much right away. And then after your first wash and dry, it'll get quite a bit duller again. So I've just gone with more red, and then I'm gonna finish off with some orange. And this dye gets everywhere, so the gloves are like an absolute necessity. And I'm just going to do a little orange along this edge. Apologies that you can't really see on that side. On this side, I'm go a little, a little more ham in here. And I think that's going to be it for the dye. Um, oh, I'm going to put some more on here because I couldn't see from where I was standing. You want to look at it kind of from all angles before you make any rash decisions, I guess. <laughs> and that is now just going to sit for at least four hours or so, or until all of the snow has melted. And then once the snow's completely melted, you do want to give it like a little bit more time. I am going to rinse my hands and then come back and get these. I don't want to get any of my orange and red dye onto this vat, so right back. And then I'm going to bring you back into the kitchen. I really wish I had a sink in my laundry room, but I think I should just be happy that I have a laundry room. I'm just going to get all of this water out of the sink and turn my tap to cold. Fill that up a little. And put my gloves back on and go and grab the dye from this morning. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put everything into the sink. There was still a little bit of ice and snow, but I had added more because I felt like it was melting a bit too quickly and then it, I didn't really need to do that at all. Another, another experiment that I had down at the bottom, I wanted to see how it would take the dye from the runoff. Um, we'll worry about that after. And I'll show you how to rinse Actually, I'm going to bring you over here so you get a better view. Change my kitchen for you. And you're just going to start rinsing with cold water and squeezing out the excess dye. The runoff from this isn't going to be enough for it to um, really affect the overall dye job. And I'm going to take off where I've tied it. I'm just going to squeeze it out with the tie so that I can unfold it and show you what it looks like. Yeah, it's got a pretty, it's got a pretty intense color payoff right now. Um, but tonight I'm going to 
wash and dry this, and then I'll do a quick check-in tomorrow to show you what everything looks like. When washing and drying the yarn or anything loose like this, you want to just put it into a mesh laundry bag and that's really going to help it stay together. You can tie things up with um, rubber bands when um, you're getting them ready for your dye bath. Um, but I, I elected to use these cotton ties because I wanted to see how it would allow the dye to sort of get under um, each area that it's being tied off. Because if you use a rubber band, it's a synthetic fiber. So no dye is going to really penetrate it. And um, with the cotton ties, as it gets wet, it's going to sort of soften those edges a little bit more than a rubber band would do. tied on really tight. <laughs> there we go. So again, you see the color is pretty intense and I tied it so that the logo wouldn't get a ton of dye into it and that the it would just sort of feather its way in. So, glad to see that that worked. <laughs> you want to be squeezing it as you're rinsing. And it's going to release the extra dye from those fibers. Once everything's had its first rinse, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a second rinse. Um, this one I kind of tied in like a little cone because um, I wanted to get sort of this big radiating um, gradient. So let's see if that happens. Um, for any dye that gets onto any hard surfaces in your home. Um, the thing that I found that works the best was the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. I know those things aren't great <laughs> as far as disposable sponges go, um, but it was the only thing that really lifted the dye off of like tile and countertops and flooring. So, oh, this got some cool. Very, very cool from a central sort of point radiating out, which is what I was hoping it would do. And this is actually double folded. So I got two of them. So that's really fun. I'm going to finish rinsing these later. I'm just checking to see if there's any questions from anybody? Don't think so. Um, but that is the basics of ice dyeing. Um, and as I said, I will check in later tonight and tomorrow to show you what the rinsed results look like and to show you what the colors from uh, the ones that we mixed up today look like. Thanks for joining me. Happy Monday. Hey folks. I just wanted to do a quick check-in on tonight's ice dyeing. Um, the ice is just about melted, as you'll be able to see shortly. And what I've decided I'd like to do is I'm going to leave all of these ones soaking overnight, just, just like this, just letting whatever's left of the ice um, run off and let them sit like that. But with this one here, that's got like hardly any um, ice left on it. I'm gonna rinse this one tonight and then I'm gonna compare the color payoff between the two after I rinse them tomorrow. So if we head over 
into the sink. And then I've got some of today's um, dye just ready to um, show you. And I'm just gonna grab my gloves so I don't totally stain my hands while I'm rinsing this packet off. I'd be interested to see how different the color payoff is when you rinse right away after the ice has melted or when you leave it all night. Oh, right away this one's like really beautiful. So, <laughs> you never want to get too excited because you don't know exactly how it's going to look once it's um, washed and dried, but I really used with the color choices so far. And you can see it takes quite a lot of rinsing to get the excess dye out. And then even after rinsing and wringing out several times. Um, the wash really changes, um, like a machine wash and dry really changes how much um, concentration you get from the dye. This is looking really good. There's a lot of nice um, sort of spots where um, Color is repeating because of the way that it is folded. So let's see. Just give it a squeeze. That looks pretty cool. So one side, the side that was towards the bottom of the die, is quite a bit lighter, and the side that was towards the top got quite a bit more um, concentration. It looks quite a bit pinker in person. On the camera, it's picking up really orange. Most of the excess dye is out of it now. And I'll show you what the ones from this morning ended up like after a wash and dry. Oops, looking back around. Hello. So this is the t-shirt, which is gonna get cut up um, and probably made into something else because it was sort of an odd positioning for the design of the, the logo. Um, but I sort of intentionally left this a little bit more blank. Like I scrunched it up so that it wouldn't get as much of the dye um, and that the rest of the sort of concentrations of color could be in other parts of the shirt. And there's this big piece of cotton, which I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out, um, I did it folded basically in half and then quartered. And then I kind of went in this sort of cone pattern. And so that made a lot of dye concentrate right here and then a lot of dye concentrate right here. And then the middle parts on both sides ended up a lot less, um, heavy with the dye. So it's pretty subtle, but I really like the way that it came out. Um, and I'll just give you another look at the pink and white and orange before it goes into the wash and dry tomorrow morning. I'm just gonna let it air dry overnight. And then, um, 
put everything into the wash in the morning after I've rinsed it. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with the different uh, results that I've had so far, and I'm eager to see what all night um, sitting in the runoff, or not even in the runoff, just in the residual dye, will do to the other pieces um, and how they'll maybe take the dye a little bit differently. But thanks for coming along on this journey today, folks. Uh, have a great night. Good morning, everyone. Um, excuse my morning voice. Um, I just wanted to do a quick check-in on the ice dyeing from yesterday. Uh, because now it's been sitting soaking all night and I just wanted to rinse it out and show everybody what things are going to look like. So I'll flip you around and show you. So it's got a really intense color right now. Um, and I think we're still going to lose a lot of that with the rinsing process um, but I wanted to sort of show what the difference would be between um, these ones and the one that I rinsed yesterday evening that had been soaking for about four hours um, and the ones that I rinsed yesterday afternoon out of the other colored dye um, that had also been soaking for about three, three and a half hours and see how much um, color this will hold in comparison. Obviously it looks pretty intense right now, but it does lose so much in the rinsing process. The yarn's probably soaked up quite a lot. What I can tell just from the rinsing process, um, the reds are certainly going to be more intense um, just because it's had more time to sit um, on the fibers. But um, there's still going to be quite a like pinky undertone to everything. And um, the um, what was listed as sort of a pinky purple is kind of coming through as like a fuchsia type color. Um, but I'm happy that I left these sitting overnight because I think it definitely is going to give more concentration to the colors compared to, um, compared to the one that I rinsed out after just a few hours. Um, especially in the t-shirt. I think the t-shirt is going to be quite a bit more intense um, and it's going to have more of those sort of little explosions of color. Um, so that's exciting. And I'm just going to grab the rinsed piece from last night because now that it's dry you'll be able to see it.
So that's sort of how it turned out. It's really peachy. And just has like a lot of nice sort of mottled colors. Um, a bit of a pink wash to it. Um, and I think I'm gonna make like maybe a pillowcase or something summery with it. And I'm gonna keep rinsing these. I won't, um, won't make you stay for that. But at the very end of this process, after every garment has been rinsed, washed, dried, and maybe upcycled into something else, I'll have a post um, sort of detailing the process and what the results are like on different, uh, different techniques. So thanks. Have a good morning, everybody.